Hey guys, welcome back. So we got us a 623K and there's parts all over the place here. So basically what happened, this thing was strapped to a the nine axle trailer and they're hauling it and something happened in the traffic and the driver moved over a little bit and this corner of the machine actually hit a, a freeway pillar, concrete pillar. So they hit a concrete pillar in this front corner and obviously messed all this up. This is where the all the exhaust, the DPF and everything sits right here. And it hit right here, pushed back, blew the tire out and it bent the wheel, the wheel back destroyed a bunch of stuff. I don't think it hit anything on the can or in the back. I do have some pictures the customer sent me. I will show you those. I have a new bumper from Cat here. Um, so we have the new bumper. It's a little bit different than the other ones. It's actually like a, a bent tube. It's not like a channel with a plate welded on the backside like a lot of the older styles are. So hopefully I can just kind of cut this off, you know, right around there. And that tube will just fit on there and line right up biggest problem is a uh, cat does not sell anything like this or this or this piece or this piece or you know out in here they don't sell any of that they refuse to sell it they want you to buy an entire frame which costs two hundred and fifty thousand dollars plus all the time it would take to transfer everything over so obviously that's out of the question but luckily we were able to buy the bumper. So the plan is to mount the bumper, to get it tacked into position so it kind of stays there. And then we were going to reverse engineer that machine. Might have to take some of the panels off or whatever, and that one should be identical. Basically take all those brackets that are straight and unbent, redesign those, and put them on this machine. That is Now we'll go back through and uh, cut that down and then we'll switch to gouging and then gouge it back flat. Still gotta cut this one.
I know I know a lot of people ask about my plasma cutter and what size it is and all that. And I'm sure you guys have questions about cutting and gouging and what's the difference? Because on camera, it probably looks like I'm doing the same thing. So this is an electrode. It's shared between cutting and gouging. So this stays exactly the same. This call it holder thing, this stays exactly the same. And you have um, nozzle. So you have cutting and you have gouging. And then you have the shield cutting and gouging. So what's the real difference between cutting and gouging? Well, cutting is more of a line. Imagine like taking a hot knife and moving it through, you know, the distance of the arc, which is an inch to two and a half inches or whatever, depending on how many amps it's set on. And that hot knife will just cut right wherever you want to cut. It's, it's the cutting arc is smaller and the cutting arc will lose the arc easier than gouging. So gouging is a little bit like a fatter of an arc. It's not, it doesn't like dig into the material as much, if that makes sense. And it doesn't have like as deep of a cut. So you could cut something thinner on gouging, but it, not something thicker, because it would just kind of like build up, <clears throat> if that makes any sense. So there is, a significant difference and then the machine also has different settings for cutting and gouging and when you gouge um, when you change the settings the arc uh, strikes easier and you can hold the arc away from the material a lot farther than you can with a cutting tip which allows you to wash material away and be a lot more precise without cutting into the piece that you're trying to save. So hopefully that makes more sense to some of you guys. And then the plasma cutter that I use on this truck is a Hypertherm Power Max 105. It requires three phase power, which I have on my big blue 600 air pack. I have sever, severed cut three and one eighth inch steel with it. It wasn't pretty, but it did cut it. <clears throat> so that's the scoop on that. Now let's uh, swap this over to gouging. Now then we're gonna gouge, gouge that off a little bit. Try to get this bumper tacked on. Got that gouged off. I got this one gouged off. You can see like literally how how close you can get. You know, I mean, that's like just barely above the surface right there. The plasma cutter allows you with a gouge setting, it really allows you to have a lot of control this one kind of looks crazy because they had this piece was welded on both sides. So I was trying to blow out the, 
that center piece right there where it's not welded. I need to make sure that this, this didn't get pulled out from the frame. It almost looks like it did, but I'll have to check that. So anyways, the gouging, you can see, you could just get super, super close with it like that. Gotta love technology. All right, we got her tacked on. I believe it's in relatively um, close to where it's gonna be, close to factory. It's kind of pretty straight. It's not on there 
um, super good so we can still move it around a little bit and I only tack the top on that side so we can go up and down and everything. We just use the regular old MIG welder, got her tacked on, and then uh, got Ben over there stripping that one down so we can get our measurements, reverse engineer these cross members. So yeah, this is a this is a, an interesting one. I did forgot did forget to mention that um, the customer they obviously put a new wheel and a tire on it so that they could drive it, and I believe the machine still ran and drove with everything that got damaged. I don't believe any sensors or wires got cut, but they did use a torch and cut a bunch of that stuff away or whatever so that they could drive it because I know some of it was like pushing into the wheel and everything. So that's why. You see a lot of torch marks and stuff on like the piece that I cut out before I got here. They did all that. So some of you will probably be wondering about that. I just get to come in and clean up their mess. So we'll uh, finish taking that one apart. All right. Well, it's been maybe about a month. They are back out here on this 623. We have a whole bunch of laser cut and formed pieces to go inside here. I've got my buddy Zach over here helping. Cleaning up some of the rust from the rain. Wire wheel. Hopefully we're gonna get these uh, cross members in here. Hopefully that all got bent straight and to the correct measurements. We'll find out here in a minute. So we'll get going on that and hopefully get this thing tacked up and we'll get the primer on here so it doesn't get get any more rust on there. I was kind of expecting to have that, have this part project done before it started raining, but things got postponed and you know, other things are priorities. Anyways, so let's get this hung from the crane and see. Well, this one got bent backwards. So that's supposed to be the square end here um, and so that will get rebent probably tomorrow that one there doesn't have a taper on it so it should, that should be bent good correctly it's about three, 3 16 too long we're going to cut it down get it to fit in there and then let's see we got a template test the front one see how far we can get because we can't put that one in today Get that So what do you know, the pieces that we got were wrong. So we got the right piece put in there now. If you can tell, this is a little bit wider here. And it's a little bit shorter. So we still gotta cap that with something. Now we're gonna get ready to put this piece in right here. It's kind of tapered. We got our uh, super strong magnets holding that up there. Hopefully we just swing a sucker in there and she drops right in.
measured it an eighth inch gap. We got our, I guess, three major pieces in. We got our two cross members. This center piece here kind of straddles the exhaust. That's why it was very critical to have a, a straight, non-bent up exhaust in here. You see how close everything is, just to make sure that fits properly. And then we got our front cap on this side. And then we're gonna work on getting the cap on the back side. And basically I'm kind of at a stopping point because I need this the big frame piece that goes right here. Then we're gonna buy all that from cat. So I'm I'll need that before I can kind of continue on to my next step. Alright. I'm gonna do uh, two parts to this probably. It's taken me like six months to get to this point just waiting on material and measurements and all kinds of other 
variables. So this is gonna be the end of part one. I feel like I'm making some pretty good progress here. They're gonna come pull this out, put it back in the other machine, then I can get in here and weld all this out and make it all nice. It's supposed to rain for the next week. So, you know, that's gonna mess everything up again. It's been pretty wet for California. And what do you do when you accidentally buy a trailer and it doesn't, you don't have the right hitch? Well, you just put it in the back of the truck, I guess. So that'll be it for this video. Stay tuned for part two. Thank you for watching.